Hello, welcome back to Too Sweet MTG, and welcome to Instant Deck Techs. In this series, we go over everything you need to build a certain commander. We'll go over the strategies and the types of cards needed you need to get the deck working. Any cards we mention will be down in the description below. In this video, we're going to be looking at Mortarion, Daemon Primarch. It is 5 and a black for a 5 6 legendary creature, Demon Primarch with flying. It has Primarch of the Death Guard. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay X. If you do, create X 2 2 Black Astartes Warrior Creature Tokens with Menace. X can't be greater than the amount of life you've lost this turn. Hell yes, the Prince of Decay has found his way into Magic the Gathering, thanks to the Warhammer 40k Universes Beyond, and I could not be happier. This is going to be a really interesting deck to build. We're going to be playing cards that let us lose as much life as possible. We'll combine this with some great mono black ramp so we can dump that mana into Mortarion, so we can create a Legion of Death Guard Astartes Warriors that we can swing through to win the game with. First up, we need to lose some life. This might be a little bit counterintuitive to how we normally play Magic, but trust me, the saying life is a resource has never been more true. First up, we have the best card in the deck by far, and that is Necropotence. This lets us pay any amount of life to exile the top card of our library, and then at our end step, the card exiled goes into our hand. We can do this as much as we want, as long as we have life to pay. Combine this with Mortarion, and we'll be drawing a whole heap of cards, all while losing the life we need to pump our mana into Mortarion and make a huge board state. Next up is the modern version of Necropotence, and it's Bolas' Citadel. In this deck, you can get as greedy as you want with the Citadel, casting a ton of spells using life instead of mana. What's nice as well is that we could easily get 10 tokens, so we can then start throwing them at our opponents. Then we have Crick, son of Yorgmoth. This lets us turn black mana pips into Phyrexian mana, meaning that they cost 2 life instead. Again, absolutely perfect for this deck, as it lets us use life instead of mana, meaning we have more left at the end of our turn that we can pump into the Primarch. Then we also have Defiler of Flesh, which does sound like it comes from the 40k world. This is like Crick's little brother, still a very solid card and a great way of ramping out our permanents while letting us lose some life. Then we have a set of cards that let us pay any amount of life. We really don't care about the effects that they have, as if I'm honest, most of them apart from Doom Whisperer aren't that great. What we do care about is lowering our life total as quickly as possible, and these let us pay as much life as we want. If I'm honest, I'd happily be paying in life the amount of mana that we have at the end of turn, so we can pump it straight into Mortarion to maximise the board state that we can create. The fact that these are instant speed as well means that we can do it right before we go to our end step, so we're only exposed for the shortest amount of time possible. When we have that board state, we can use a card like Razakes the Foul blooded to turn an Astartes token into any card in our deck, be it removal or one of our great win conditions. Moving on, the flip side of that life loss is that we'll want some ways to get it back, mainly so that we can lose it all over again. First up, we have a card like Eternity Vessel. This lets us bank our life total when it comes in, so that later in the game when we play a land, we can reset it to what it was when the vessel came into play. I think this is a really strong card in the deck, and I think the gameplay with this should be with this out in play, you play your land first before you do anything else, so that your life total will always be at the highest point. Then you can go through your turn, losing as much life as you want, ready to play a land next turn to reset it and do it all over again. Then one other quick thing to mention with this, is that you can keep something like an Evolving Wilds or a Terramorphic Expanse ready on your opponent's turns. You can then crack it if someone tries to Alpha Strike you when your life total is low. Some other ways of getting life back, which I'm sure the Chaos Gods will really appreciate, is swapping your life total with an opponent. The life swings with these could be phenomenal. It might mean you have to take a turn off making tokens with Mortarion, but if we're doing this we're probably already going to have a healthy Legion of Warriors to help us finish off our opponents. A similar sort of card is Tree of Perdition. Get this out nice and early and start setting some opponent's life totals to 13, so that we can then swap it back to recharge our life total. Moving on to some more traditional life gain sources now, with Demon's Horn, Bontu's Monument, and Staff of the Death Magus. These will just sit there gaining us some life as we naturally go about our turns. Absolutely solid in the deck. Another way of gaining life back is with Pontith of Blight. Giving all the creatures we cast Extort is a great way to drain out the table, all while filling our life total boots. And then it's not a mono black deck without mentioning Gary, Grey Merchant of Asphodel. With all the black devotion pips running around in this deck, this could easily end up just being a win condition by itself. And then there is a card like Exquisite Blood, which turns the damage our board and our commander does into life gain for us. Again, so we can pump it into one of those life loss cards and make even more warriors. And then you have something like Shieldred the Apocalypse, because it's just very good. It drains out the board whenever they draw a card, all while boosting ours higher. For some more budget-friendly options, you can look at running some Blood Artist effects, which drain out our opponents when creatures die. This build is also a sneaky tokens deck, and things die all the time in Commander, so these could be great options as a way of keeping us alive and our opponents in check. The next part of the plan is having all the mana in the world to pump into Mortarion, ideally equal to the amount of life that we've lost that turn. First up are some cards that have to be mentioned in a mono black deck like this, and that's cards that make a bucket load of black mana. You have cards that tap from mana equal to the amount of swamps that we control, with things like Cabal Coffers and Magus of the Coffers. 
and then you have cards that double the amount of mana that swamps actually tap for, with Cryptgast and Nakana Revenant. Some of these are cheaper than others, but hopefully they all get reprinted soon, as they're just so good in a mono black deck like this. And then what goes really nicely with those is Urborg Tomb of Yorgmoth. Turning every land into a swamp will be great for us, not just for the synergy with those previous cards, but also in making all of our colourless utility lands tap for black mana as well. If you're running either Cabal Coffers or Urborg Tomb of Yorgmoth, then it's also worth running an expedition map to find them. Honestly, they are just that good. Another card that's great in a monocolored deck like this is Cage Sun. This doubles the amount of mana that our swamps tap for, but also buffs up our black Astartes warrior tokens as well. Talking of more tokens, the Chaos Gods has some more sinister plans for them as well, in that we can turn them into mana with things like Culling the Weak and Ashnod's Altar. Then we have one bit of land ramp that we can run in Wayfarer's Bauble, really solid in any non-green deck as a way of ramping us ahead. And then finally, we can top off our ramp section with some mana rocks. There's plenty out there, and there's also some nice 40k themed ones as well to go with the commander. Moving over to our card draw now, this is a section where Mono Black absolutely excels at, especially in a deck that cares about losing life. With that, we have cards like Argyll's Bloodfast, Greed, and Erebus God of the Dead. These will let us pay some mana and some life to draw us cards and refill our hand. This is absolutely everything the deck wants to do. We then also have a card like Pact Weapon. This draws us cards when our flying commander attacks and buffs it up while also draining us for some life. It also has the added bonus of making it so that we don't lose the game for having zero or less life. If I'm honest, this is a great backup plan in case things aren't going as well as we want them to. You then have a card like Sorin the Mirthless, which is another good source of self-drain tagged onto some card draw. Being a planeswalker, it also has some nice other utility as well. Then, in any mono black deck packing a load of swamps, we have a card like Dread Presence. Whenever we play a swamp, it can either draw us a card and we lose one life, or it can start picking off small creatures or pinging our opponents. That's a pretty solid backup plan. Then we have the just very good in any deck that can cast them, Black Market Connections and Phyrexian Arena. Fantastic at drawing cards, all while lowering our life total. Moving over to our interaction now, we're in black so we have a vast variety of options out there for us. However, we're primarily going to be looking at ones that let us lose some more life. There's some really good options here. Dismember lets us pay for life to cast it. Feed the Swarm loses us life equal to the mana value of the thing that we're removing, while also being one of the few answers to enchantments that we can run. You then have Snuff Out, which is free to cast as long as we have a Swamp and four life to spend. For board wipes, we have the pretty obvious in this deck, Toxic Deluge. Hopefully with some of our protection, Mortarion is able to live through us and make us a board state all over again. And then we have a card like Font of Agonies. This rewards us for all the life that we paid, as effectively with every four life we lose, we get an unconditional removal spell. Definitely one of the best bits of interaction for this deck. Then on the flip side of things, we have some cards that gain us some life back if we're running a bit short, with things like Tendril of Corruption and Noxious Gear Help, both really solid answers. And then one last board wipe that I do hope goes down in price, and that's the Meat Hook Massacre. Great at gaining us some life back, and also potentially being a win con if we have enough of a board state. Moving over to some protection now, we will need a fair bit of it in this deck to keep our commander around. We really don't want to be paying all that life, only for it to be removed before we get the Legion assembled. First up is Soul Channeling, which is a great bit for this deck, as not only does it give Mortarion the ability to regenerate as any Daemon Prince of Nurgle should, it also is another way that we can bring down our life total as much as we want. Then we have some always solid in any deck list, Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots, so we can make sure Mortarion isn't dying to any targeted removal. After those, we have effects like Malakir Rebirth and Undying Malice, which are instants that let us bring Mortarion back to the battlefield if it's ever removed. These are really solid options in this deck, as our opponents generally won't see them coming. And then one last card to mention in this section, which is a bit of a flavour fail, I will admit, and that's the Golden Throne. Also, this isn't protection for Mortarion either, this is protection for us. This is a failsafe in case we ever get a bit too greedy and our opponents try to punish us for it. The fact this also lets us sack an Astartes to make some mana will be nice as well. Who knows, maybe the Emperor has forgiven one of his fallen sons. Similarly to protection, it'll be nice to have a bit of recursion in the deck as well to make sure we can get some of those key pieces back. First up is Chainer, Dimension Master. This lets us pay 3 black and 3 life to bring anything back from a graveyard into play under our control. A great mana and life sink to bring us back into a game. In a similar vein, Phyrexian Reclamation is great at bringing back those key bits that we need to our hand. On the flip side of things, with have Erebus giving our board lifelink can mean our life total can shoot up, ready for us to bring it back down all over again. And then obviously the fact it can bring back a key creature for a turn is absolutely fantastic. That life game theme also loves Witch of the Moors. This can be really miserable for your opponents, as if we've gained life they have to sack a creature. All this while also keeping our hand full of good and useful creatures. A very solid card. Okay, let's move on to some more dedicated ways of winning the game. First up, we can replace Mortarion's Scythe with some other cool bits of equipment or a one-time instant. We have cards like Lash Wrath and Nightmare Lash that buff up its power equal to the amount of swamps that we control. That should hopefully be quite a bit, and the fact that we have to pay life to equip them is really nice. Then you have a card like Hatred, which says pay any amount of life to buff up Mortarion's power for a turn. Perfect for that 21 command the damage win. 
We then have a card like Repay in Kind. This makes each player's life total become the lowest amongst all players. This is absolutely absurd if we're at a low life total already with a massive board state, as we can bring everyone down to match us and then finish them off with the death card tokens that we've already made. In a similar vein, you have Bond of Agony, great for getting that Mortarian life loss train going. And then you have Ayara, First of Lochthvein. This drains out our opponents whenever a black creature enters the battlefield under our control. Importantly, those Astartes tokens that we're going to be making off the Mortarian are black, so each time we make one with Ayara out, we'll drain out our opponents. This could really lead to some absolutely huge life swings, and could be unbeatable once it's up and running. And then some cards we have to mention in any mono black deck that's running the cards that pump up the amount of mana we make from our swamps, we have some big X spells that we can dump that into with Exsanguinate and Torment of Hailfire. These are some of the best haymakers in Magic, and great ways of closing out a game. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, as we're mono black we can run a decent amount. Starting with a card that hopefully with its pioneer play will mean it's due for a reprint, and that's Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. This taps for mana equal to our devotion to black. Being a mono black deck, this should be quite a lot. Then you have cards like Baron Moor, which has cycling to help smooth out our draws. You have Pachuca Bog, which is a great answer to any graveyard decks at the table. You then have Mortuary Mire and Witch's Cottage for some added recursion that are basically free to run. You then have a card like Command Beacon, which is great for a one time getting around paying the full command attacks. Reliquary Tower will be great at letting us get super greedy with that Necropotence. And then War Room is some great additional card draw that also costs us some life, so a very solid include as well. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We've recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base, which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck tech on. Thank you very much for watching.